good evening all welcome to this uh, ultrasound cases and spotters set 4 this is the first case here you can see uh, there is dense there are ecogenic calcifications noted in the endometrium and also here you can see there are dense calcifications and even ossifications in the endometrium with post acoustic shadowing here this is also other case where you can see there is a uh, calcifications in the lower endometrium with post acoustic shadowing and even in nepothian cyst in the cervix i'll play the video for you here you can see there are this is also this is a case where you can see dense uh, endometrial ossification with post acoustic shadowing and incidentally you can also see a hemorrhagic cyst or endometriotic cyst in the right adnexal region so this is nothing but whenever you see uh, dense calcifications or ossifications in the endometrium once uh, one differential you can suspect is endometrial osseous metaplasia so endometrial osseous metaplasia is a pathological condition where mature bone formation takes place within the endometrium it is uh, whenever you see endometrial calcification or ossification in a patient with chronic history of miscarriage and chronic endometriosis definitely suspect endometrial osseous metaplasia uh, symptoms can be pelvic pain menstrual irregularities and even main clinical presentation will be infertility sonographic finding can be uh, you can see ecogenic endometrial plate with calcifications or ossifications and post acoustic shadowing Differentials can be considered are intrauterine and de contraceptive device. Sometimes gas can mimic like this after HSG, foreign bodies, Asherman syndrome, calcific submucosal fibrosis, and Mullerian tumors. Treatment will be hysteroscopic removal of osseous fragments and, and HP correlation, and second option by uterine curatage. So, this was a classical case of endometrial osseous metaplasia. You can pause the video and see all the findings next case here you can see there is a large cystic lesion noted in the upper one third of the vagina it is not extending into the cervix uh, here this is the large cystic lesion uh, here also there is a cystic lesion in the upper one third of the vagina so thanks to dr gansham turkar and previously the uh, endometrial osseous metaplasia thanks to amol karvande and shashank chapala so we will try to see what is gartner duct cyst gartner duct cyst develops from uh, embryonic remains of wolfian or mesonephric duct Gartner ducts often have association with metanephric um, abnormalities. Uh, Gartner duct cysts are typically located in the upper portion of the vagina and in the anterolateral wall. These are small in size, less than 2 cm. Sometimes they are very large, as we have seen in this case. They may cause compression over the adjacent bladder. And common differentials can be Bartholin gland cyst uh, and urethral diverticulum, skin gland cyst on either side of the urethra, and sometimes hematocalpus. So we'll try to see the differentiating points between Gartner duct cyst and Bartholin duct cyst. Gartner duct cyst typically arises from embryonic remnants of the Wolfian or mesonephric duct, whereas Bartholin duct cysts are cysts of the Bartholin gland due to obstruction by stone or uh, any other infective process. Gartner duct cysts are typically located in the upper one third of the vagina or superior portion in the anterolateral wall, whereas Bartholin duct cysts are located in the posterior aspect of the vagina in the lower portion of the vagina. In coronal imaging, typically these Gartner duct cysts are located above the level of sympathetic fibrosis and Bartholin duct cysts are located below the level of symphysis pubis. In transparent ultrasound, these Gartner duct cysts are not closely seen to the labia majora, whereas Bartholin duct cysts are closely seen to the labia majora, closely seen adjacent to the labia majora. So, one mnemonic is Bartholin close to butt uh, and also below, Bartholin for below and Bartholin close to butt. So, other association Gartner duct cyst is classically associated with abnormalities of metanephric urinary system that is herlin werner wanderlich syndrome, renal agenesis, ipsilateral renal dysplasia and crossed fused ectopia, where there are no associations commonly seen in Bartholin duct cyst. These Gartner duct cysts are small, less than 2 cm and sometimes very large cysts. But these Bartholin duct cysts are usually small cysts. Common complications can be dyspareunia, mass effect and adjacent structures and problem in problems in obstetric delivery in case of Gartner duct cyst, infection, abscess and rarely tumor in case of Bartholin duct cyst. And treatment will be cyst drainage, excision and intracystic tetracycline sclerotherapy in Gartner duct cyst, whereas conservative treatment or balloon catheter and even marsupialization in case of recurrent Bartholin duct cyst. So these are all the differentiating points you can remember for differentiating Gartner duct cyst from Bartholin duct cyst. Next, this is other case where you can see, sorry, this is other case where you can see uh, this is the amnion, this is the fetus, this is the amnion and the amnion is not completely fused with that of the chorion and there are multiple echoes with echoes noted within between the amnion and chorion. So, whenever you see the picture like this, less than 14 weeks, uh, before 14 weeks, it is normal and incidental finding. But after 14 weeks, definitely it is uh, considered as chorioamniotic separation. So, chorioamniotic separation is occurs in pre pregnancy characterized by separation of the chorion from the fetal amniotic membrane 
normally you will not able to see the amnion you will not able to see the amnion separately from the chorion increased rates of underlying fetal chromosomal and developmental abnormalities can be seen uh, even before 14 weeks it can be normal finding most reported cases occur after invasive intrauterine procedures such as previous amniocentesis and hysterotomy choriamniotic separation is free floating or adherent membrane the separation can extend throughout the entire uterine cavity up to the base of the umbilical cord or over the surface of the placenta differential diagnosis can be amniotic band subchorionic hemorrhage and choriamniotis complications include preterm delivery miscarriage intrauterine death umbilical cord complications and amniotic band so next case uh, here you can see this is the popliteal region this is the popliteal artery there are multiple cystic spaces surrounding the popliteal artery here also you can see this is the artery and surrounding there there are multiple cystic areas adjacent to the artery here you can see this is the video here you can see this is the artery popliteal artery on color doppler you can see the popliteal artery flow flow pattern but there are multiple cystic spaces adjacent to the popliteal artery which are not taking the color so whenever you see multiple cystic spaces adjacent to the popliteal artery uh, which are nothing but multiple mucus cysts uh, in the adventitial wall of the uh, adventitial portion of the wall of the affected vessel common in popliteal region definitely suspect cystic adventitial disease so on color doppler these cystic spaces do not uh, show any color, color flow pattern uh, whereas the artery will show the color flow pattern when these cystic lesions are large and eccentric they may displace the artery to one side that is called scimitar sign on dsa and other differentials can be popliteal artery entrapment syndrome and baker cyst these can be considered as dds in cystic adventitial disease so whenever you see multiple cystic spaces adjacent to the artery especially in adjacent to the popliteal artery in popliteal region which is not taking up the flow pattern definitely suspect cystic adventitial disease and here this is other case thanks to Sarita Jha for contributing this case here you can see the placenta is thickened heterogeneously thickened there is abnormal bulge there are multiple enlarged placental lacunae and also you can see there is defect or interrupted serosa and the placental tissue is, is seen extending it up to the urinary bladder and on color doppler you can see multiple bridging vessels so whenever you see this type of pattern definite and there is also loss of hypoechoic retroplacental area here you can see there is loss of hypoechoic retroplacental area so this is nothing but placenta accreta spectrum disorder so uh, commonly uh, is a defect in the uterine wall uh, commonly seen at the level of scar dehiscence which leads to defective decidua and subsequent abnormal implantation of the trophoblast it is common indication for peripartum hysterectomy and even severe maternal morbidity in ultrasound you can see there are um, heterogeneous areas of placenta lacunes loss of retroplacental hypoechoic areas and bridging vessels and color doppler in mri you can see abnormal uterine or placental bulge Classical will be more in, uh, important finding is T2-weighted dark bands, loss of retroplacental T2-weighted hypointensity inter interface, so, serosal defects can be seen, extra invasion can be seen, bladder wall interruption and even these vessels can be seen in the vesicouterine space that is called as bladder vessel sign. So in this case was a TIFA case come uh, with G G3, P2 with previous two sections and this was given as a placenta accreta spectrum likely in creta and MR was suggested. So remember placenta accreta spectrum disorder. Here this is the last case you can see this is the uh, transrectal sonography here this you can see there is enlarged prostate with multiple uh, hypoechoic areas on color doppler you can see there is raised vascularity within the prostate and sometimes you can also see hypoechoic areas with abscesses in it so whenever you see enlarged prostate with raised vascularity definitely suspect prostatitis which is nothing but infection or inflammation of the prostate gland thank you all